Great. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. My name is Dominic Eloise. I'm here as part of the University of Florida and my company, Source. We are developing a solar energy generator that is going to change the world. So as a customer who's looking for renewable energy, I want clean and consistent power as well as an effect on my utility bill. Well, did you know that 80% of people who want solar panels actually can't install them? And that's due to four main reasons. Initially, they don't have enough money for the principal investment of $12,500 for a five kilowatt system, which is the average in the United States. Their location is not optimal for direct sunlight contact. They consume too much power that's rated for the systems. As well as this, their available space on their homes, because they need to be on the roofs, is not effective. They need 27 square meters on every house. Our solution to that problem tackles all four of those categories. It's called Source. It's a patented, low-cost, low-temperature Stirling engine paired with a solar thermal collector. This system cost is nearly 50% of solar panels at $7,250. And if you do the math, it comes out to about eight and a half years of return on investment. Not only that, it delivers these statistics for nine square meters on your home, which is one third of the size of solar panels, and it operates for 10 hours per day. Now, if I was a customer and I wanted to go and get renewable energy for my home, I would go to a company like First Solar or SunPower, and I would be forced to go into a product that cost me $12,500 after tax credits and take 17 years to see that money back for me on my investment. And not only that, it's going to take up my whole roof because it's 27 square meters on the top. Now, I went to Puerto Rico the other day, well, the other month, and I looked up and I saw energy generators and the power lines up. And I thought to myself, wow, if there was a hurricane, I bet you they'd be out of power for a while. I went to my Uber a little bit later. I asked him that, and he confirmed my suspicions. His family was out of power for three months after the last wave of hurricanes hit. With my product, that would have not happened. My product delivers clean, consistent power throughout all terrain, even when the clouds are out. That's my mission. That is why I'm doing what I'm doing. Because basic rights, his ability to clean, cook, and even shave, those are basic, and that should happen. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be something that we think about. And that's my mission, and that's what I want you guys to join. So thank you, and let's redefine solar. Are you uh, getting any interest from any commercial uh, potential partners? Yeah, um, so these solar collectors are produced by a company called Arctic Solar. And we um, have partnered with them. They've agreed to give us in-kind donation for all of the equipment uh, and fittings that we need, um, which we use to develop the first prototype. And we will be using to develop the rest of the system to optimize, uh, to optimize the system. So those are some of our numbers as well. Have you done any testing in real world situations to see the, if the production of the, the solar power meets your expectations? Yeah, so I, I, I have an office space in Gainesville and it's part of a commercial park and we have some solars installed there that we've done the testing with and we've attached power meters to it and we've confirmed that it creates five kilowatt hours of, or five kilowatts of energy. From the system. And are you able to store that energy to use later? So that is one of the next steps in development. You know, we've gotten some advice from Arctic Solar as well as, you know, Duke Energy, who's just gave $20 million to the university to fund some, some solar energy, but kind of want to stay away from that. Um, but they, um, so yes, the, the system is operating, but it's not at a residential level. We don't have it on a home. I have it working at my business and it's powering. Um, and we're deciding between the grid-centered approach or, you know, a centralized uh, power where, you know, you plug in appliances to it, your major appliances um, throughout the year. Because that might be more effective in places like Puerto Rico who have five major appliances that they're looking to use rather than go into a grid that's really, really bad. It could be an initial product as well.
Well, thank you very much for your time, guys. I appreciate it.